And insurance companies traditionally will attempt to narrow whatever defense dollars they're going to have to pay. And some of the arguments that insurers make can be overcome if the company and its executives are thinking through the issues. And so there's some important points to keep in mind. The first point is that directors and officers' liability policies tend to provide defense coverage, but not a duty to defend. And insurance carriers will state that because the policies do not contain an explicit duty to defend, the quote unquote potentiality standard that is used with respect to general liability policies and which creates more significant coverage for the defense obligation than the indemnity obligation doesn't apply here. And let me explain to you what I mean by that. Under general liability policies with a duty to defend, the insurance company has to pay defense dollars anytime there is a potential for coverage under the policy. So if it turns out that an exclusion at the end of the day precludes coverage, there will be coverage under the policy until the insurance company is able to actually prove the exclusion applies as long as there is a potential for coverage. So there's an explicit duty to defend, duty to defend under general liability policies. Under DNO policies, directors and officers liability policies, typically the insurance company is obligated to reimburse defense costs, but not obligated to come in on day one and hire a lawyer and provide a defense to the insurer. So courts around the country have concluded that the potentiality standard applies even if you're in a DNO policy. As a result, there should be significant protection for insureds who are seeking to recover defense dollars from their insurer. Another argument that insurers make is that many DNO policies require insurers to reimburse defense costs prior to the final disposition of a claim. And what insurance companies will say is as long as they pay at some point prior to the time that the claim is finally resolved, the claim against the insured is finally resolved, they have complied with their defense obligation under the policy. Now the problem for the insured is that if judgment is entered three years after the insured starts incurring defense fees from their lawyers, uh, and the insurance company reimburses those defense fees the day before the judgment is entered, the insurance company is going to say it's complied with its obligations. The insured is going to be sitting there for almost three years without any reimbursement of defense fees from its insurance company. It's interesting to me that, court, that insurers actually make that argument, but I have experienced personally insurance carriers making that argument in writing. Uh, the courts who have addressed this issue have said, no, insurance company, you're providing a defense obligation. The insured has paid money for that defense obligation. It needs to be paid contemporaneous to the time that it's incurring fees. So the insurance company is required by many courts to pay, even with this final disposition language in its policy, to pay from the time that it, you know, some certain number of days after re receives bills from the insured, which again is important because the insured needs money as it's being incurred. And our, another argument to support why insurance companies would have to do that is that sometimes insurance companies actually include language in their policies that say they need not pay until the litigation is resolved. So if there's language out there that supports the concept that the insured need not pay until the litigation is resolved, that would be sufficient to help the insured argue that if that language is not included in the insurer's policy, then the insurer must have meant something else, which is they would pay contemporaneous to the time that the defense fees are incurred.